what's Jewish House? It was called Jewish House Crisis Center. <coughs> I took the word out, crisis, and I said, what's crisis? We're talking about anything from drug and alcohol, homelessness, um, mental health, family breakdown, domestic violence, um, all kinds of different crises. Um, somebody becomes unwell in the family, suicide, etc. We're there to be able to support them, but in a crisis model. But, and that's been the success of Jewish House, is that we've pretty much pulled out exactly what we do, and for the most part, work very well. Um, the other thing that's really important in this sort of space is it's very good to come up with theories, but then you have to deliver and actually measure and have the outcomes, um, which is costly and challenging, and many charities just don't have the infrastructure to be able to do that. The, the way of thinking and the way of measuring and the way of um, connecting with, the, with corporates and government is, is key, and that was really important for us. Um, so we put together that report and wanted to show up and how we can save them money at that point. We were going to save them I think $10 million, you know, we were early stages. Um, so we did a, a report more recently on a program that we've engaged with government. So it's called, the government will call it Supported Temporary Accommodation. So to take a step back and to start stepping into the um, homelessness um, space, you know, the numbers are thrown around, 110,000 plus people are homeless in Australia on any given night. In New South Wales, it's about 40 something thousand. But that number represents a very broad definition of homeless, homelessness. So it represents people living in overcrowded houses, it represents um, couch surfers, boarding houses, it represents many different kinds of homelessness. And, I'm one, and the reason why I say that, and not to try and minimize homelessness, but in order to be able to put it in a perspective that, to say that we actually can do something about it. So if you actually peel it right back to say how many people are sleeping on the street or in their car on any given night in New South Wales, we're talking probably less than 3,000, which is not such a huge number and we're talking across the whole state. So in the city, it's 400, <coughs> it's 400 plus. Um, the Tweed and the Byron Bay has got you know, some big numbers. There's Parramatta has got numbers. So there, there, there's smaller numbers all around. If you talk about Eastern Suburbs, for instance, I think the last count was about 15 or 20 sleeping across the Eastern Suburbs, and that includes Bondi Beach and Bondi Junction where most of, them, most of them are. Their first line of defense, so the first beds that they put you into, is the refuge system. Matthew Talbot, uh, Edward Eagle Lodge, all these different places that we, we hear about. There's about 200,000 calls a year to link to home, of which about 44,000 are helped with some sort of accommodation. The government-funded refuge system is capable of helping 10% of that. The capacity of the refuge system is 10%. The charity supported uh, refuge beds, another 10%. So if you're right, and then the rest are sort of put into <coughs> overflow, which means we send them to hotels um, and, and things like that, boarding houses, etc. <coughs> pay for them per, per night to to stay in these places without really any outcomes or measurements and things like that because that's really the overflow. So therefore, if you're running a business and you only have capacity to service 10% of your business, maybe 20% of your business and the rest you're sort of um, playing catch up with, you can imagine what your business is gonna be doing. It's not gonna be great. Um, but that's what government's running. So we went to the government and when we talk about overflow, to give you an idea of numbers, um, last year I think it was about $24 million worth of overflow. So putting people up in cheap hotels. Um, they're not cheap, um, and they're actually, in many cases, re-traumatizing people. So therefore, if you talk to the people in the city, um, on the streets, they refuse to go to TA, uh, temporary accommodation in these hotels, because in many of the hotels there's drugs, there's proposition for sex, etc. It's actually quite scary 
um, a number of the hotels are um, Cleveland Street and places like that, which, which is really quite terrible for people. So we went to the government and we said, listen, for the same amount of money that you're paying for a night in a hotel, we can put people up and actually help them and provide support services to them. And they said, uh, I don't know. But uh, at that point, the, the government minister for that was Gabrielle Upton, and she was the local minister, so she sort of helped push it along, and we got six beds. Um, and what we were able to do with six and then pushed it to 12 is we did this report, which I mentioned, which we launched in, uh, in Parliament last year. So what we showed is that after two weeks, roughly, thank you, after two weeks, um, over 80% of our people were placed into longer term accommodation versus the refuge system where people stay for around three months. So right there we already have a problem. So where the government is saying the refuge system, a three month process is actually our front line of defense, we're saying, well, if you have a two week line of defense and then only 35% of our people actually end up in the refuge system, that we can actually run the refuge system better and actually specialize the refuge system so they're specialist mental health, specialist drug and alcohol. So once they stay with us and for a little while, we actually know what they need. Because on a phone call, you can never really know what a person needs. You know, they're traumatized and they just want a bed and, and we don't, don't really know what the other issues are going on for them. But after a week or two with them staying with us, we know pretty much what it is and only 35% of the people. So that's part of the discussion with government is that they actually need to turn the whole thing around. The other thing that we did with the report is we showed the government that if they did turn it around or if they put out 200 beds like the ones that we do, we'll save the government $150 million a year. But government is very slow. Um, I mean, just the process to, so now we've expanded, we've got 30 um, of, these, of these rooms. But in order to get there, we went through, the government did a, um, an EOI. So that's an interesting concept of doing an EOI instead of a tender. 